What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Bust Your Bookie Show. Today is Saturday, July 27th, going over my top plays in the UFC 304. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Bust Your Bookie Show. What we do here, we give you our expert predictions along with the opportunity for a $40 giveaway. We're the only show out there that does it like this. If you would like to qualify, all that you need to do, number one, subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button. You can hit it right now. Number two, comment below for and oh. Give us the good vibes that we need to sweep the card. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep going a perfect 4 0, I will cash up somebody. I'll send you 40 bucks. We did it about three days ago on our baseball show. We did it about four days ago on our NBA Summer League show. We cover two baseball shows per day. We're doing tennis as well. And of course, we will be doing football and college basketball and NBA as it starts back up. Anyways, I've got four plays for you guys today on the fight card. So let's go ahead and jump into it. These plays are in order. But as you know, these exact times are up in the air. But let's jump into it. The first fight we're, we're going to talk about is Nathaniel Wood going against Daniel Pinata. We're looking at Wood, known as the prospect, holding a record of 19-6. and six. He fights at 145 pounds, a 69-inch reach. He connects on 5.91 significant strikes per minute with a 50% accuracy rate and absorbs 4.22 significant strikes per minute while defending 56%. Wood is also active in grappling, averaging 1.74 takedowns per 15 minutes with a 48% takedown accuracy and a 70% takedown defensive rate. In his last fight, Wood lost to Muhammad Naimov by unanimous decision. He did land 70 of 94 total strikes and 50 of 72 significant strikes. On the other side, Daniel the Pit Pinata. Pineda, I don't know. You guys can correct, can correct me if I'm wrong on the pronunciation on some of these names. He's coming in with a record of 28 and 15, and he's listed at 5 foot 7, also a 69 inch reach. He lands 3.09 significant strikes per minute at a 49% accuracy rate and absorbs 3.18 significant strikes per minute with a 46% defense rate. Pineda averages fewer takedowns at 0.86 per 15 minutes with a 25% success rate and 48% takedown defense. He's also active in seeking submissions, averaging 1.7 per 15 minutes. In his last fight, he uh, lost to Alex Caceres by unanimous decision, landing 27 of 56 significant strikes. Certainly a smaller percentage when you compare that to Wood's last match and his striking percentage. All right, let's talk about our play here. Our play for this fight is going to be over 2.5 total rounds at plus 115 odds. Both fighters have shown resilience and the ability to go the distance in previous fights. Wood's conservative fighting style combined with his striking defense and grappling abilities suggests that he can avoid an early finish here. On the other side, looking at Daniel, his durability and his higher submission attempts also indicate a likelihood of prolonged engagement and, again, uh, making this fight just last longer. I'm expecting both players to look towards the ground game, a good portion of this game, of this fight, uh, which should allow us to go over this number. Given their past performances and their defensive ability, I like the over 2.5 total rounds here as our first play of the day. So lock it in, taking over 2.5 total rounds in the Wood versus Daniel Pineda game fight as our first play of the day. All right, fight number two, we're talking about Christian Duncan versus Gregory Rodriguez. Duncan is a 28-year-old fighter with a 79-inch reach and a record of 10-1, and one, and he recently beat Claudio Ribeiro, showing off striking precision by landing 70% of his significant strikes and finishing the fight with a punch to the head in round two. Standing at six foot two, Duncan averages 5.96 significant strikes per minute with a 62% accuracy rate, and he absorbs 3.82 significant strikes per minute. His defense is solid, averaging, uh, I'm sorry, avoiding 50% of his opponent's strikes, but his grappling is a bit less developed averaging only 0.45 takedowns per three rounds with a 14% success rate. On the other side, Gregory Rodriguez is known as RoboCop, pretty sweet nickname, 
The 32 year old is standing six foot three with a 75 inch reach and a record of 15 and five. He won his last fight against Brad Tavares with a punch to the head in round three. Rodriguez lands 6.08 significant strikes per minute with a 55% accuracy rate. His grappling is solid, uh, landing 45% of his takedown attempts and stopping 85% of his opponent's takedowns. Rodriguez's offensive abilities and his higher submission attempt rate, which is 0.5 per 15 minutes, really highlight his ability to finish fights effectively. Considering their strengths and recent performances, I like Gregory Rodriguez to win here at plus 120 odds. That is our play here. Give us Rodriguez plus 120 for the win. While Duncan's precision and defensive skills are admirable, Rodriguez's superior grappling, his striking volume, and his greater endurance, I think give him the slight advantage in my opinion, and all we need is a win here. I also like Rodriguez's ability to withstand and counteract significant strikes from his opponents. So we are rolling with Rodriguez at plus 120 odds as our second play of the day. Our third play now, we're looking at Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades. Aspinall, digging into him at 31 years old, Aspinall very much appears to be the future of heavyweight division. Already the interim champion, Aspinall combines a well-rounded skill set with incredible physical attributes like very few that we've seen before. His speed is very remarkable for a heavyweight, and his striking is both very precise and powerful. He is known for finishing fights quickly, and he has shown a great ability to take down his opponents with his legs or to overpower them and take them down on the ground. He also has quick knockout punches and lightning-fast double leg takedowns as we talked about so it just makes him a very very difficult person to uh, plan for the only real question mark with him is how he's going to do if a fight lasts longer as we have yet to see him go beyond the seven minute mark in his UFC career so that could be a problem for him if this does go deeper blades known as razor He's a grinding wrestler with five rounds of cardio. He's the kind of fighter who can make a flashy finisher look mediocre if he's able to play his game. Blades defeated Aspinall two years ago, but this was due to a freak knee injury. So I don't know how much we can really take that into account, but it is worth noting here. His path to victory is pretty simple and clear, in my opinion. He will need to utilize his wrestling background, where he was very good in college, to extend the fight, gain top position, and grind down Aspinall. He has proven power in his hands, having defeated some of the biggest hitters in the division, but his primary strength lies in his wrestling ability. His ability to survive the initial early momentum and try to get these uh, rounds into the later stages will be crucial if he's going to win. However, we are going to take Aspinall here, and more specifically, we're going to take him to win by KO or TKO, and I'm seeing this at minus 165 odds at most of the sports books. Despite Blades' strength, he needs to be nearly perfect in the first round to avoid getting caught by one of Aspinall's powerful strikes. It's also worth noting, this match is fairly juiced to go under 1.5 total rounds, which indicates to us that we can expect Aspinall to come out here early, aggressive, and try to take care of business here in the first round. I think Aspinall's speed, his striking precision, and his finishing ability make him very tough to go against, especially to start off the gate in round one. So I like Aspinall here to win by KO or TKO at minus 165 as our third play. And our fourth and final play now, you guys know we're down to the main event, Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad. Let's break this one down and I'll tell you guys what we are on here. Talking about Leon Edwards first, the reigning welterweight champion, going against Muhammad in a highly anticipated rematch here. Edwards has an impressive 13-fight unbeaten streak as he captured the welterweight title from Kamru Usman, and he was successful in defending it against Usman and Colby Covington. Known for his striking abilities, Edwards has a height and reach advantage over Muhammad and typically fights conservatively, staying at kickboxing range. Despite his conservative style, Edwards was aggressive in their first fight, overwhelming Muhammad with pressure and landing a significant head kick. This approach showcases his ability to adapt and dominate, making him an extremely tough and versatile fighter to go against. 
On the other side, looking at Mr. Muhammad, he enters this fight on a 10-fight unbeaten streak, having demonstrated significant improvement since their last contest. Uh, and, you know, he's a well-rounded skill set guy, high IQ, and that's led him to notable victories over contenders like Gilbert Burns and Sean Brady. His strengths come on the offensive side with his wrestling abilities and his overall endurance that he has shown in previous fights. He's consistently pressuring opponents and backing them up against the cage to alternate between strikes and takedowns. Muhammad will need to utilize these strengths effectively to challenge Edwards, who has shown resilience and really a great ability to adjust and adapt to different fighters in his previous fights. With all this being said, you know, Leon Edwards is the heavy favorite favorite here. It'd be easy and simple to say, hey, take him to win. But those are really bad odds, minus 230. So I'm going to give you guys a better play in my opinion here. I like Edwards to win by KO or submission at plus 200 odds. I think Edwards' superior striking combined with his ability to pressure and disrupt opponents' game plans give him the edge in this rematch here. In their first encounter, Edwards was aggressive with his approach and it really overwhelmed Muhammad. And I think he's going to use the same type of strategy here to get, like I said, either the KO or submission. And I really love it at plus 200 odds. I think betting on Edwards to win inside the distance offers value. Um, I think his striking, his grappling defense can neutralize Muhammad's wrestling attempts. So let's roll with a nice plus money play here. We're going to take Edwards plus 200 as our fourth and final play. That's going to do it for us. Our quick recap on all four plays. We're taking over two and a half total rounds in the Wood versus Daniel Pineda game. We are taking the plus 120 Rodriguez to win against Duncan. Aspinall to win by KO or TKO at minus 165 odds. And then uh, taking uh, Edwards plus 200 here by KO or submission, depending on what your book has. But plus 200 for Edwards, KO or submission is what my book has it at, at plus 200 odds as our fourth and final play. Just a reminder, if you'd like to qualify for the $40 giveaway, all that you need to do, number one, Subscribe to the channel. You have to be a subscriber. Number two, comment below 4 and 0. Oh, give us the good vibes that we need to sweep the card. And number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep, I will cash up somebody. I'll send you 40 bucks. Set your notifications so that you can be tuned uh, for when our baseball shows that will be coming out later on today, as well as our tennis. Our goal on this channel is to cover every sport possible, bringing you guys our experts and our analysis on all of the plays for all the sports. Our motto on this channel is to bust your bookie. Let's go for the sweep today.